Mina, konnichiwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Back with more Job. We're going to be in verse, I'm sorry, chapter 24 for this video. And here at the beginning of the video, I want to be completely open and honest. The reason I am putting out four videos today, two from Job, two from Dark Souls 2, if so, four videos in one day, is because last night when I was filming Dark Souls with my friend Robbie, um, I was drinking while in the middle, and I, by drinking I mean alcohol, not just water or soda or anything. I was drinking some alcoholic beverages, some Mike's Harder beverages, and I had three back to back, and it got to me a lot heavier than I thought it would. I was, I think I was past the point of tipsiness last night. I actually repented of that. Don't plan on doing that anytime soon. At the end of the night, I was like, I'm gonna put on my YouTube videos, and quite frankly, I really don't want to. It would be a bit of a struggle to get those things up and running. Hadn't recorded any, um, hadn't recorded any preaching videos yet, and I was like, I'm a little far gone, so I think I'll just double up tomorrow. So I repented of that, and I apologize to y'all. On with the message. We're going to be in chapter 24. We're going to start at verse 2. Christians and believers know that there's bad in this world. Um, I don't know how, I can't say how anyone else explains it. I can only say how I explain it. But the acknowledgement that it exists uh, just because we believe in God and we believe he is good, that doesn't mean we have a blind eye to the evils of this world. So let's go. Let's start at verse 2 and read some of what Job himself talked about in his day. Some remove landmarks. They seize flocks violently and feed on them. They drive away the donkey of the fatherless. They take the widow's ox as a pledge. They push the needy off the road. All the poor of the land are forced to hide. Indeed, like wild donkeys in the desert, they go out to their work searching for food. The wilderness yields food for them and for their children. They gather their fodder in the field and glean in the vineyard of the wicked. They spend the night naked without clothing and have no covering in the cold. They are wet with the showers of the mountains and huddle around the rock for want of shelter. Some snatch the fatherless from the breast and take a pledge from the poor. They cause the poor to go naked without clothing and they take away the sheaves from the hungry. They press out oil within their walls and tread wine presses yet suffer thirst. The dying groan in the city, and the souls of the wounded cry out, yet God does not charge them with wrong. There are those who rebel against the light. They do not know its ways, nor abide in its paths. The murderer rises with the light. He kills the poor and needy, and in the night he is like a thief. The eye of the adulterer waits for the twilight, saying, No eye will see me, and he disguises his face. In the dark they break into houses, which they marked for themselves in the daytime. They do not know the light, for the morning is the same to them as the shadow of death. If someone recognizes them, they are in the terrors of the shadow of death. So, well, I covered in a previous video how, how God deals with evil, how God is indeed behind all evil in the sense that like he gives, he gives us the body and the ability um, to... Well, like in the murderous case, to kill other people. If you have functioning arms and enough functioning strength and speed, you can kill another and the right tools, which man invented. And I guess even the ones man didn't invent, just a simple rock or a piece of wood to beat someone to death with. We take the things that God created, including us, and we do horrible things with them. Um, he gives us the breath with which we curse him and our neighbors. And in that sense, he does he is behind all even the fact that he allows it at this time. Now I covered in that video in a little bit more detail how God's putting up with that stuff for now. There's coming a day of judgment when he will deal with it. We believers also, we see the evil in this world and when we see the evil in this world, our response isn't, oh well, that's just how it goes. We, we acknowledge that it's not fair. We don't like it. I've talked about that in a few past chapters of Job as well. We see how good people suffer. And the evil get away with stuff. And it's depressing and discouraging. And we get torn down by it, just like Job was. And I will, and I, just to kind of cover the whole God matter, I mentioned God will take them into judgment. Job knew this as well. If you hop down to verse 23, He, that is God, gives them security, and they rely on it, yet his eyes are on their ways. They are exalted for a little while, then they are gone. They are brought low. They are taken out of the way like all others. They dry out like the heads of grain. So all men die. Um, good and bad men alike both die. But God's eyes are on 
our ways, and we will be held accountable for them at the day of judgment. And as of this life, as of right now, we see the evils in this world, we despise them, we loathe them, just like God does. And what we try to do is we try to live our lives in accordance with God's commandments to build up our fellow man. And if we see him doing something that God says is wrong, we oppose that thing and we say, hey, that's wrong, that's bad, you need to stop that. And depending on how bad it is, we even have laws in place to say, okay, we are physically not letting you do this. We are restraining you. We're not going to let you do this action, whatever it is, may, whatever it may be that is being done. Like murder, that was mentioned. Uh, there's, I don't think there's a single society in the world where there's a government where murder is tolerated. That is simply not put up with. So when we see that evil, our motivation is okay. Let's help our fellow man. Let's love them through it. Let's help them out. And if they refuse to repent, or if they've done something particularly atrocious, we will physically constrain and stop them so they will not hurt anyone else. It gives us motivation to try to be like God, to try to follow His ways and His commandments, and to try to make sure that other people are given as much opportunity as possible. Like Job, he helped the poor. He helped the needy. He didn't take... Um, property as a pledge from a widow or from someone who was fatherless or someone who was poor in general. He tried to help them as much as he could when he had the ability to do so. And of course, at the end of all of this, Job is restored back to where he was. And after this t terrible time, I don't know how long it was of suffering, he is eventually raised up. So we as Christians, we also, we try to follow God. We try to obey Him. We try to obey we try to uphold his order in the world when we see something going against that. We try our best to rebuke it. And if it's bad enough, we will physically go out of our way to stop it. But yeah, we know that evil's in the world. We know it's here. And we know God could do something about it. And actually, he is doing something right now. He is working on people to, and giving them time in his mercy to bring them to repentance. He's giving us a chance in the middle of our messing up to come to him and repent before that hour of judgment comes, before the day of judgment's at hand and there is no more hope. He lingers in his mercy and in his grace. And we, alongside him, again, I'm going to say it again, fourth or fifth time, we try to live our lives in accordance with him. We try to help our fellow man, rebuke the people that are doing things that are in the wrong, tell people about God that need to know about him. Hey, God exists. He offers forgiveness of sin. And if something bad enough is going on, Laws are put in place to try to stop those evil men from to continually doing those evil things. And one day we will all stand before God and everything will be ultimately made right. But right now, we need to do our best to live for Him, to help our fellow man. Rebuke those who are in need of rebuking, stop those who are in need of stopping. So guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I love you. And God bless.